How do you keep him safe around the house? Well, mostly um, safety gates um, to keep him contained and also um, the doorknob covers. He's really good at getting out of the doors. Yeah. What do you do to keep him safe? Well, we keep all the dangerous stuff like cleaners and things way out of his reach, put latches on all the cabinets, and uh, we put those little plastic caps inside the outlets. Do those work? They used to work, but now he just kind of pulls them out and plays with them. Did you know that on average, seven children a day are injured by contact with electrical outlets? No, I had no idea. No. I, can, I can see how easily and quickly it can happen. Can you talk a little bit about your experience working here at the Burn Center? What we see in the Burn Center is that 90% of the patients we treat are burned in totally preventable, predictable events. Uh, we also see a fair number of children who touch an electrical outlet. Can you talk specifically about electrical related injuries? With the little ones, with the toddlers who are exploring and poking and seeing what's going on, uh, there are kids that stuff things into outlets and uh, butter knives or keys or bobby pins, um, those are the kinds of things that kids like to put in there and then they get into trouble that way. But with children especially, it's hard to keep an eye on them every second. Have either of you ever heard of tamper resistant receptacles? No, no, I no, haven't. haven't. Safety is our very, very most primary concern, both on the job and in the home. I think the temper-resistant receptacles are a very good idea for the residential market, especially because of the added safety they provide for toddlers or young children. Well, where do I get them? They're available for all residential applications. All major manufacturers have them. Unfortunately, not everyone knows about them. Internal shutters prevent objects from being inserted, but the shutters release when you plug something in. We actually take, you know, and give them the little blocks and say, let's put the round peg in the round hole and the square peg in the square hole, and, you know, so they learn from that. Well, unfortunately, sometimes they learn other things that they can put things into. Are you aware that tamper-resistant receptacles have been required in the 2008 National Electrical Code? I think that's one of the greatest things that can happen. Noah was a one and a half year old who had a key that he stuck in an outlet. His mother Dory was nice enough to tell us uh, a little bit about what happened that day. She writes, fire began shooting out of the receptacle. There was a large zapping noise. Noah's hand was covered in black soot. We were standing in a room listening to our one-year-old screaming in pain and there was not one thing we could do to take the pain away or soothe our child. Most times there are good parents who are concerned and appropriate and just never thought of it. And the classic, I took my eye off him for just a minute and there we are. The result was a second degree burn to his index finger, his middle finger and his ring finger. After three months of treatment at the burn center at Arkansas Children's Hospital, Noah's fingers were healing nicely. We were praying for a little or no scarring, no crooked fingers, and no skin graft. What is the range of injuries that you've dealt with over the years? There are burns, there are injuries to nerves. If you get uh, facial injuries, they can be very severe in terms of a cosmetic and developmental sense. And can be a, a, an extensive burn, not only from the standpoint of the electricity, uh, but from the standpoint of the sparks that go with that, uh, that can really be a deep burn. And some can even lose fingers uh, because of that. They're usually real young children that don't understand what's going on, so they're terrified. It's really scary for everybody involved. If there had been tamper-resistant receptacles, it wouldn't have happened. You, you can't teach a two-year-old not to stick something in an outlet. You just have to make them where they can't do it. The National Electrical Manufacturers Association estimates that the added cost of using tamper-resistant receptacles in the average home is less than $50. Safety outlets for the entire house, just 50 bucks? Wow, this car seat costs twice as much. How do you feel about the idea of the NEC requiring tamper-resistant receptacles in new homes? It sounds like a marvelous idea. Um, hopefully it will um, put a dent in my business. And I think that if it just saves one instance where we don't lose a finger or a thumb, or even worse, 
where the electricity that comes out of that line causes a shock that goes to the heart that can actually stop that heart, then we've made a big difference and I think that's so important. Everything went really well with Noah and so his outcome's really good, uh, but it's not always going to be the case. Placing them in hospitals and new buildings would keep anybody else's child from going through what my child had to go through. Then, you know, we're proud to recommend it ourselves because it's been a road to go down. It really has.